Hi, I'm Cecily Korst. Welcome to the trailer. The Trailer Talks is brought to you by Imaging DNA. Ideas, images, insight. The core of the conversation is the image at imagingdna.com. My name is Mel Nelson. I am 32 years old. I live in Kalispell, Montana, which is northwest Montana near Glacier National Park. We manufacture uh, gourmet beverage mixes for the coffee industry and specialty drink enthusiasts. We send them domestically anywhere in the U.S. as well we ship internationally. And our product line consists of chocolate, white chocolate, and chai that are just simply mixed with hot milk. And then we have a frappe as well that can be used for smoothies or in frappes. And we developed a first to, we're actually first to market with a new product that is a line sweetened with stevia and it's a natural sweetener. And we do the same products in that line, the chocolate, white chocolate and chai and frappe in a naturally sweetened, nat naturally sweetened version that um, is also shipped domestically and abroad. So how did you get your name? Um, actually, our name comes from the Bible. Jesus encourages his disciples to have steadfast faith when he says that the cost of five sparrows is only pennies, but that God the Father knows if even one of them falls to the ground. And so don't be afraid. And as entrepreneurs, I feel like you have to have that level of boldness and fearlessness to um, do what it takes to be an entrepreneur and to go out and do something new and bold and courageous. And so that's what's well, important to us. And then also we have five in our family. We have three children. So you're not busy or anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get here? Tell me about your journey to this point. So Five Sparrows was actually born from another company that we founded called Lakeside Coffee Company. It was a drive through espresso hut that uh, we had on the west shore of Flathead Lake in a cute little tourist community. And I owned that with my husband for five years when the economy took a turn for the worst. And we decided to take a really hard look at our books and try and figure out, you know, what are we going to do to keep this business profitable? And so at that time, um, what we saw was that we were paying a lot of money for products like the ones I developed. And I thought, you know, I love to cook. I love to bake. And I wonder if I could make my own chocolate. And so I did, and I got together with my dad to figure out, you know, exactly, um, you know, help me figure out how to turn things from, you know, cups into the weight measurements, and then let's cost this thing out. Um, and I remember him taking off his glasses and just looking at me, and he said, you could sell this stuff. And that sort of, the wheel started turning there, and I developed the other mixes. I used them on my customers as guinea pigs. Uh, which they were great, but the most honest guinea pigs were, of course, our children, who um, were happy to tell me when it was not so good. <laughs> and um, the line developed from there. I ended up talking to some distributors and coffee roasters who we had longstanding relationships with because of our other business and connections in the industry. And they expressed an interest in being able to buy on a weekly basis from us to help their cash flow because they were having to buy um, – in large quantities and it was eating up their capital. Um, as well, we had customers that were coming to me once I developed their regular line that would say, Mel, you know, you're a great barista. Give me something that doesn't have sugar in it. And I would be like, wow, you could have honey or you can have one of these others. And, you know, uh, that was fine for a lot of people. They would take the products of Splenda, but a lot of them said, you know, I don't want any artificial sweeteners. And, so I started looking around and I realized there was no naturally sweetened product on the market. And that's when we decided to just make it ourselves. Have you always been an entrepreneur or is this something that came about later on? Um, I pretty much have always been an entrepreneur. My father was a farmer, so he worked for himself. My mom was a top uh, real estate salesperson. And um, they always taught me to, you know, think outside of the box and, and to kind of make a space for myself. And I think especially living in Montana, a lot of us invent jobs for ourselves to be able to live in the beautiful place that we live. 
So you ship internationally, and I can understand domestic, but what does it, it – that sounds like a lot of hoops to jump through. It is, but it was. it's worth it for us, for key accounts. Um, we actually had – the one, the first place that we've shipped to is Dubai and they found us online and, um, they're actually a coffee franchise company where they're very innovative as well Is they're the first coffee franchise that wants to do totally naturally sweetened offerings. So our drinks were a perfect mix. All of their baked goods are made with stevia and, um, they approached us. And so for those types of accounts that are going to be big distributor accounts, it really behooves us to jump through those hoops and do what we need to do to satisfy that demand. And then recently we um, did sort of an exercise to define key markets and we realized that international export was one of the lowest barrier places in marketing and sales for us to go. And so we've been really focusing on the international exporting and it's just the internet makes the world so small. Um, It makes it really easy to connect with people foreign in foreign countries. And it also makes uh, President Obama had an initiative where he wanted to double U.S. exports in the next five years. And so it's made a ton of federal and state um, programs available to us that we normally wouldn't have. So we have a lot of um, connections there as well that are helping us discover this foreign market. Wow. So what was the biggest learning curve for you? Um, I think the biggest learning curve for us was going from a retail environment where you're open every day, you meet with your customers on a day-to-day basis to becoming a manufacturer and you have to go completely to the other end of the spectrum and, um, and learn how to not only to make your customers happy, but how exactly to market to them and how the distribution lines work. And so that was a really big learning curve for us. So what is success for you in the future? I feel like success professionally for Five Sparrows um, is us continuing to innovate, continuing to um, listen to our customers and see what they really, really want and being able to provide that to them in a way that matches up with our values. What has been the most creative part of your work so far? Um, The most creative part of our work is developing the recipes. Um, It's something that we really love to do and something that I loved about belonging to the cafe industry is that, you know, the coffee culture is very deep and um, people are, baristas are always challenging themselves to become better and to become um, more in tune with what customers want and to just to just make our craft better all the time. And so it's something that I love about the coffee industry that we've been able to translate into Five Sparrows is, you know, what can we do to make our products premium for our customers and offer them the best thing that we can? Um, We're also able to be creative in our marketing, which I love as well. What's the most fun part of your work? For me, the most fun part of my work is getting to connect with other entrepreneurs and see what we have in common and see what other people's strengths are that might be able to help Five Sparrows and to see, you know, what our strengths are and things that we've experienced that might be able to help them. And that's just so interesting to me to meet other entrepreneurs and see, you know, how we can help each other. To me, that's the most fun thing about doing this. It's an incubator over here. So we see a lot of entrepreneurs. But um, I imagine in Montana, it's a little bit more sparse. Yeah, especially in our valley. Um, It's very interesting because we're all spread out over a 30-mile radius. Mm -hmm. And so when it's a little more um, difficult to get people connected. But when you do just those brainstorming sessions and the interesting people you meet and then the ways that we're able to grow as entrepreneurs and, you know, help our community is just fun. (laughs) Who's your biggest advocate? Let's see. We have actually a very um, close-knit board. We have Ron Nelson, who was a former VP of sales in Japan for Nike, um, a family member. And uh, he's a huge advocate. He's constantly helping us. If I get stuck, he's all about, you know, listening and trying to help us 
come up with a solution. And even if I'm not stuck, he's, you know, calling me up now, what's, what's five sparrows doing? Um, also on our board, we have Keith Brown, who's a former CEO of Starbucks. And he's a great guy to have in our corner because he's just, he's also a serial entrepreneur and he just can't get enough of it. So even though he's super busy, if I need him, he's all about, you know, helping five sparrows. That's awesome. What a great, great help to you, I'm sure. Oh, it's it's tremendous. And so hopefully, I know that you asked me what something, um, what we would define as success in Five Sparrows. And I think definitely for us to be able to be in a position to help people at some point is going to be a major mile marker for that kind of success. So what is that giant success? I mean, if you like could snap your fingers tomorrow and have you know, company amazing, what would it be? Um, Well, we really haven't put any kind of limit on our growth. We think this business is super scalable. Um, We may even end up, you know, outsourcing production at some point so that we can continue to just grow the company to be what it needs to be. Um, I foresee us being in multiple um, international countries and having lines of distribution in each one of those. Um, So I think that for us, it's um, going to be, you know, worldwide distribution for Five Sparrows for sure in the next three years. So what's the one thing that you think everyone should know about living life creatively? I think it's really important to trust your instincts to be able to determine what, because customers will come to you and they'll say, I need this. And it's important to be able to read that and say, I think that they're telling me this, but I know that they really want this. And so to be, live your life creatively, you have to be able to take what people are telling you and give them what they really want. So you have to sort of be a mind reader. Yes. And you have to let that creative part of you guide you in that process. Um, Just before you go, where can people find out more about you, your company? They can find out more about us at www.fivesparrowsbrand.com. We also have a YouTube account at Five Sparrows Cafe Products. Thanks for being on the Trailer Talks. I really appreciate it. And um, I wish you all the success in the world. Thank you so much. You as well. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, I'm going to test some audio levels here. So tell me what you had for breakfast this morning. Oh, cookies, Christmas cookies. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome.